Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. It's a blessed day that the Lord has granted us. We are blessed. We are blessed and blessed. I'm telling you, they never stop blessing us. You know, we are blessed because we are born of God in the first place. And God has no, has no curse in himself. <laughs> the nature of God cannot be cursed. It's uh, an abomination if you think that God's nature can be cast, or you can cast God. It can only come back to you. It cannot, you cannot cast God because of who he is. You know, and he shared that with us. He shared us the same life and the same nature. Why? Because we are his sons, simply his sons. Imagine, think about being sons of God, the sons of God, sons of God. That means the one who gave birth to you is exactly the the explanation of your identity you, you know why they will ask you who's your mother who's your father they're trying to trace your identity the id cards in many places you know who are you they want to know who you are that's a very a very important question to answer and in this life everybody has to answer this question who am i very important. You know that the who am I is going to determine where you will go. It's going to determine what you will do. It's going to determine what you know about yourself, about God, about others, about life, about... Did you know that the who I am decides everything in your life? That's, that's, that's very important. The who I am decides everything. And many people have not realized that the who I am carries the... Uh, is what will determine who you really, where you're gonna go, how far you're gonna go, what you're gonna do, and how much you're gonna do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the book of Matthew, in chapter chapter twelve, verse forty-two, there's a, a scripture there. For t, uh, chapter 12, verse 42, it talks about wisdom, but in this way. It says, The queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the voice at uh, the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed, a greater than Solomon is here. So I have to repeat again as we then I will explain. The queen of uh, the south will rise up in the judgment which this generation and condemn with, uh, with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. We have looked at the wisdom of Solomon, one day, we, we, I believe we, we, we read there, and uh, we saw how he prayed in the night, God appeared in his dream, and he talked to him, and he said, well, since you have asked wisdom, and you do not ask uh, riches and honor, all that is added to you, and that wisdom has only function in you, no one has ever been great than you in the past, and no one will be greater than you in the future. And so there's an idea generally that you see wisdom that Solomon is still the greatest man who has ever lived here and who had uh, wisdom. But this verse will give us another, uh, another perception. And you know who's talking here? It's important. Christ Jesus is talking here. Now, 
in the book of in in that book in in this chapter 12 verse uh, verse 42 i want you to notice what he's talking about you know i i wonder where we get the ability and the expertise of talking of seeing what is not there instead of seeing what is there now 12 42 says the queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with the generation and condemn it with this generation and condemn it now understand you know sometimes we think about um we think about the future you know people saw ah, the end you know the queen will rise no jesus wasn't talking about the end he's talking about that generation that he was dealing with of course he had given other examples uh, Prior to this example, he talked about Jonah's sign because these people came and said, well, we will not believe in you unless you give us a sign. These people resisted Jesus. They didn't want to believe. They didn't want to see him for who he was. And they did it deliberately and they were like, show us a, a sign. And Jesus said, I will not show a sign that is different from, than the Jonah's sign. And of course, he had already given them the sign. So like, in other words, focus on Jonah. What happened in the story of Jonah? you will realize that the sign had already been given. And Jesus Christ himself is the sign. You know how sad that these people are asking for a sign. Yet Jonah talked about the three days and three nights to spend in the fish. And was talking about the death and the resurrection of Jesus that was spent three nights and three days in the, in, the, in, in the tomb. It was talking about Jesus. But you see, in other words, the sign is not the fish. The sign is not uh, the three nights and three days. The sign is that one who, who come out of the fish as Jonah was. Jonah was swallowed by the fish, and then on the third day he was swallowed. He uh, was, he was uh, brought to the shore sea. You know, it had to bring him back. Why? That was a sign of resurrection. That Jesus Christ will resurrect. Jesus himself says, look, all those that happened, of course, in the Old Testament, whatever Moses said was about him, and the New Testament the study that all these things were talking were in shadows, types and shadows, and we're talking about Jesus Christ himself. Well, so the queen of Sheba, south, who rise up in the judgment with this generation. Jesus is like, you, do you know the queen of Sheba? Now, he's pointing out to something they knew. And they knew in their history that there's this woman, a queen of Sheba, who came to see Solomon. And when she came to see Solomon, she carried with her um, a lot of goods, and she had come to worship um, the wisdom of, uh, of, 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 of this woman, the wisdom of uh, Solomon, of, of Solomon rather. So when she came, imagine we are told here that the queen of the south will rise up in this, in this, in the, in the judgment with this generation and condemn it. In other words, there's a sign, there's something that happened in your history that should condemn you right now. You see, again, this condemnation, you have to understand because these things are said over and over again. It's not because that the, the, fact that she came from the south and the queen of sheba came to solomon and she, she she heard about his wisdom and she came to see him this does not you know mean that god was judging anybody no but you see when people reject the love of god to them they feel and experience judgment not because god is judging them but because the rejection of love will, will create a sense of judgment and the judgment itself is not there. And that's why he said that God judged them. How did he judge them? He cannot judge them. Do you know what it means to judge the world by his son? That Jesus Christ was given the whole judgment. In other words, he would demonstrate his love. And those who will be able to see the love of God through Jesus, they will enjoy life forever. But those who will reject judge the, the love of God, they will experience judgment. They will feel condemned. They are like, ah, they will continue to live in hell, living hell right there. Not because God has brought it, but because they reject what they are not supposed to be rejecting. So if it was meant for good, it turns out to be something very evil, a very horrible experience. You see what I mean? 
Very, very important. So what is Jesus saying here as far as judgment is concerned? He says, look, this woman will rise in judgment with this generation. In other words, this generation has somebody. Oh my God. Now Jesus is talking about himself. This generation has been blessed to have somebody, to receive somebody, to see with their eyes somebody who cannot be compared to who? To Solomon. This generation was blessed to see a God man. God put up, who wrapped, wrapped up in the flesh. God who incarnated. This God who is standing in their midst, they have the ability, they are, they, they are blessed to see him. You see? Because of that story, they understood that this woman came and she was so amused by the wisdom in the house of, in, 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 the, in the kingdom in, in Israel, specifically in Solomon's palace. She was so amused, so started, started. And she was coming from the ends of the world. What was this woman representing? She was representing the Gentiles. And she's like, imagine this woman who was not living there. It, now, those who are living there, some of them were, ah, they despised. They didn't see how much they were blessed to have Solomon. Men didn't see it. They didn't see it. But the woman from the ends of the earth came from afar there. She came to, as, to see by herself the wisdom of what? Of, who? of Solomon. And that's what he says, the queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it. So she's not condemning us like, oh, you know, we condemn you. No, it's like they will realize. Imagine that she came to embrace the wisdom, but the wisdom itself, is, if it's not embraced, it becomes like judgment. It's like love, you know. So it's like she will rise up in judgment with this generation because this generation is rejecting the most wonderful, the only gift that has ever been given by God himself. That means the son of God, the eternal son of God. For she came from the ends of the earth. Notice, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. So this woman came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. But imagine those who are around Solomon, probably not, not many, had decided to come and see Solomon and learn the wisdom of Solomon. But the people who come from afar will come and they will listen to the voice of wisdom. Think about it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And indeed, a greater than Solomon is here. And indeed, a greater than Solomon is what? Is here. Indeed, a greater than Solomon is here. So who is greater than Solomon? Who is speaking here? Jesus. He says, now, you understand. I, I think many are, now you understand what he's talking about. He's saying, Solomon cannot be compared to me. And Solomon was, had wisdom, and his wisdom was the best from the east, those who came before him and after him. But I cannot be compared to him. This is Jesus speaking. I am the wisdom of God, of course. I am the wisdom. Jesus is the wisdom. Now imagine he's saying that the one who is inferior to me, a woman came from the ends of the earth and came to see and, and assist and, and enjoy and receive and listen to that wisdom. But you who are seeing somebody that is greater than Solomon and you're still asking for a, a, a sign, you what well, stupidity is very bad. How can you ask for a sign? A woman is coming to see a person, right? I am Jesus Christ and I'm the sign. This woman is coming to see Solomon. You are asking for a sign, and yet a greater than Solomon is standing here. Who is greater? What greater sign do you want to see than me? A woman came to see Solomon, and imagine I am standing in your midst and you despise me. You cannot perceive that I'm greater than Solomon. I'm still the one telling you that I'm greater than Solomon. And you are supposed to be rejoicing because you are seeing me here. But because you are not receiving it, it turns out to be condemnation. Do you see the point? 
Shalom, shalom.